afternoon. Uh, mahirap tong time natin kasi antok na ako, antok pa kayo. Uh, let's see if survive tayo dito. I'm uh, Alan Gayong Gala, born in uh, Sambuanga del Norte and raised in South Cotabato. And uh, uh, Attended uh, PBTS and uh, graduated in 88, BATS 88. May BATS 88 ba dito? Yeah, pinakamaingay, pinakamasaya na BATS. <laughs> uh, after seminary, God called me uh, to Pastor Matina uh, Baptist Church sa Davao and then uh, Planted a church in General Santos in South Cotabato. And then in 1998, Pastor Ralph uh, invited me to, uh, or sponsored us to attend a, a Billy Graham School of Evangelism in Florida. And then uh, from there, visited his church in San Diego. And then that opened an opportunity to uh, uh, plant a church in uh, Oceanside, California. So instrumental po yung church niya. Uh, because uh, my vision is to plant a church one hour drive from San Diego, going L.A. Uh, so they considered me to come over and uh, plant the church in Oceanside in 2000. So went there with my family and uh, being sure of God's call for us to uh, plant a church in in California, but uh, the church that I planted in California did not succeed. In uh, we started 2000, and then uh, 2004, the church closed doors. That was very devastating to me, to my family, and of course probably to the mother church. I've learned a lot from that, you know, uh, should I say failure. Uh, I will, I will uh, talk more about that uh, later. Uh, I will share to you more about what I've learned uh, in failure in church planting. I, I've heard a lot of stories about success here, but let me tell you, Uh, my story of failure and what I've learned. Because from that failure there, for pastoring the church for four years and it closed doors, it has its story on its own. But uh, that failure opened great opportunities for us. So in 2006, God called us to start a church in Arizona. And so me and my family moved there. Uh, during that time, Arizona has only one Filipino Southern Baptist Church pastored by Pastor Joel uh, Padilla, uh, also an alumnus here. And uh, we had talked to partner and make long story short, uh, I started a church in, in Arizona, in the West Air Valley of Arizona in 2006 and still pastoring the church until now. So we just celebrated our 10th year last November. Uh, why Arizona? Uh, during the time when we hit rock bottom in you know, ministry, we, we thought uh, that probably we're not for, for the U.S. We have to go back and uh, reconsider where God and really pray where God would bring us next. But during the time... The Lord has opened doors, and there were calls from other churches, like in Delaware, in, in, in Vallejo, California, even in L.A. area, and Oklahoma, and Houston. But uh, why Arizona? There was no call. It was a desert. In fact, my children asked me, why, why Arizona? It's the hottest state in uh, the U.S. Uh, sabi ng mga anak ko, kahit saan, basta hindi lang Arizona at saka Alaska. Pwede na. And so, 2006, we 
you know, moved to Arizona, uh, drove a U-Haul, uh, everything in there with my kids, and uh, complaining uh, throughout the seven-hour drive, why Arizona, why Arizona, and they were crying. That was heartbreaking to us. And we have to go there, no house, no apartment reserve, no whatever. But the Lord has just provided everything. And I still believe that when God guides, God provides. Amen. Amen. And so God opened the way. It was really hard. You know, if you're not sure of your call, you will go back. Uh, probably to, to your original places. Anyway, uh, Arizona has uh, 10 million uh, people, okay? Uh, the Phoenix metro area is around 5 million people, uh, 25 cities in metro Phoenix area alone. It's a valley like Metro Manila or probably wider than Metro Manila, 5,000 people, 39,000 Filipinos the last time I checked. 39,000 Filipinos. When I came, when we came there in 2006, there was only one Southern Baptist church, as I have said. And then we uh, started a church, and we were able to help plant a church in Tucson, now pastored by Joey Reyes. We partnered with Pastor Joel uh, early on in our existence as a church. We call our church Valley International Christian Church. We are truly international. 80% uh, Filipinos, and uh, we have Chinese, Japanese, Anglo, uh, African American, uh, Native Americans, uh, Vietnamese, Cambodian, Laotian, uh, Rwandan, and uh, the world is in there. You don't have to go to uh, abroad, but uh, they're there already. Uh, our church, Valley International Christian Church, we are. Uh, really a uh, church planting church. We, we planted uh, a church in Santa Rita, Pampanga in 2010 in partnership with Pastor Chris uh, Kalalang. Uh, probably heard about that. And uh, two years ago, we planted a church in Tolosa, Leyte, after the Yolanda uh, typhoon uh, and continually support our pastor there. And then lately, we were able to plant a church in Gilbert, Arizona. It's one hour drive from uh, our church. And uh, our challenge there actually uh, is the need for pastors. Though, though we have the contextualized leadership development uh, put up by the convention, but we don't have much Filipinos respond to uh, uh, the need for, for training. Uh, some of my deacons have uh, attended the contextualized leadership training there. And uh, though I'm not there now, I am, or we are in our uh, four-month uh, sabbatical with my wife here. We'll be going back March uh, 20th. Our deacons are taking care, uh, uh, they are uh, taking care of the church right now. So uh, that, that helped me a lot, although I am not intentionally a part of their training, but we have already a training center established uh, close to where we are. So that really helped a lot in the training of our leaders. Uh, we are also helping uh, to start a church in Calgary, Canada, we went there with my wife and my mission team so we can meet the Filipinos there and, and start a church. And we are in the process of uh, putting up that church. And also, uh, soon we'll be partnering with uh, Pastor Ralph and uh, a pastor in Nevada, in Las Vegas, to start a Filipino church there. Uh, as I have said, I, I've learned a lot of lessons in the failures uh, that uh, we experience uh, in, in California, uh, I would like to share to you to close uh, three important things. Number one, make sure of your call. Don't go to, the full, to, to, uh, to, to America because it's a, 
there, there's a beautiful life there or whatever your reason is. Uh, when Pastor Ralph uh, invited us to consider uh, planting a church in, in California, we really prayed for two years with my wife because I'm also pastoring a church in Corona Dal, and it was not an easy decision. We have to make sure that God really called us there. And because we were sure that God called us, even in those times where it was so hard in 2004 when the church was closing down, we knew very well that God called us to plant churches in the U.S. And that kept us there and kept go going. So make sure of that. It's not that your wife called you there or <laughs> your, your relatives you know, called you to be there. But God really called you there. Number two is never trust the flesh. In those four years, I thought I'm good enough to start a church. I planted churches in the Philippines, so that would be, you know, uh, uh, simple. Uh, trusted so much the flesh, you know, that you are smart enough, that you are good enough, that you can do it, you know. Uh, it's very deceiving. So don't, don't trust the flesh. Uh, I thank Pastor or Dr. Sauri for giving me uh, 78 as grade in evangelism because that made me really learn more. Uh, that made me really learn more about evangelism. And uh, through, through this experience, I've, I've really learned a lot. Never trust the flesh. Lastly, no God's no glory in church planting. Yeah, many times it's so soon to quit. Uh, so, so easy to quit, you know, because why not just work somewhere? I could earn more money. And, you know, you know ministry, there's not really uh, much in there uh, materially. But, you know, that... Our God is rich. Amen? And uh, He knows our needs. Sometimes the, the, the obstacles, the challenges are just so, so overwhelming. Pastor uh, Fred here uh, shared about the challenge in, in his context is, is the, the comfortable life. And that's what we also have in, in, in Arizona. Uh, Filipinos there are not uh, not responsive of of the gospel that much than probably in some other other countries because they have everything. Uh, what else do they need? So intentionally, I have to Pastor uh, Fred like what uh, he's doing uh, to really intentionally go to where the Filipinos are. Uh, uh, Filipino. Uh, stores, uh, tennis courts. Uh, I don't really play much basketball, but I go there, join them, you know, uh, attend their funeral services. If they ask me to dedicate their children, even if they're not Christians or members in our church, I have to go there and dedicate their children. So uh, where do you want them to dedicate their children? To the Satanist church? Or just go there to their house and, you know, pray for them, pray for the family, dedicate their, their, their children to the Lord. So uh, I realize when God sent you to a city, you're not only a pastor for a certain people. You know, when Jesus entered Jerusalem in the triumphal entry in, where is that, Luke chapter 19? You know, when he saw the city, he wept, right? And he was not only concerned of his friends or family, he was so concerned of the whole city. And that God uh, gave that in my heart. If wherever I go, wherever he sent me in a city or in a community, I am a pastor for the whole community, not just for a few. And uh, that's what I learned from the failures that the Lord allowed me to experience. And it made me grow, made, me, uh, made my, my feet stay on the ground. And keep praising Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Ralph, for this opportunity. A question? Ah, uh, let me say this. Uh, we need more pastors in Arizona. Okay. Uh, reality now in, in, in our state is that there's not much second generation responding to 
uh, to the call to be pastors. And so we need, uh, we need, we need pastors. Actually, our, our new church plant in Gilbert, we are petitioning uh, in the process right now. Uh, probably some of you know already, Pastor uh, Roly Delgado. It's in the process. Probably in two to three months, uh, he will be there pastoring our church plant in Gilbert. Uh, if God really called you to plant churches in in uh, in the U.S., especially in Arizona, uh, just uh, you know, uh, procure all papers that's needed, and we'll take you there, uh, and we'll 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 take care of you there. I mean. Uh, I met somebody from, uh, I met some uh, a lady here, her uh, son, a doctor in Yuma, and uh, they're looking for a church, uh, si tita, nandito, uh, walang church in Yuma, it's a big city, that's the border city of California and, and Arizona, and uh, I, I looked up, there are around 4,000 Filipinos in that city. We have no Southern Baptist Filipino church in that city. And, and that's only three hours drive from our place. And we can, we can help start a church if, if there's a worker available for that, uh, for that city. So if God called you uh, to go to the U.S. to pastor, I think the U.S. pastors here, uh, I believe they can also help you. Uh, just make sure God is sending you there. Thank you.